story. <laughs> it's a great privilege to uh, preach again. I just love the Word of God, and to me, um, it's always a challenge. I, I never take it for granted. I, I just want to bring what I believe is a word from the Lord. And to, today's heading is growing in Christ. We must understand that being in Christ is where we grow. And then, like the last few songs, as we grow, we give God the glory because all we have to do is release ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and Father, and we will grow. And I think that's an important thing to say. So it's a matter of releasing ourselves into the hands of our Lord more and more. So... Um, you cannot assume growth. Sometimes you can observe growth. Sometimes it's hidden and only comes up from the ground, if you like, later. And I just want to start with uh, uh, an introductory verse, Ephesians 4, 14 to 16. And Jesus talking, Then there will be no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. We are here together to grow in Christ that we might be more effective in him. And it's wonderful to see uh, a person come to Christ and watch them grow. However, this is not always the case. So I was going to draw a chart. You know me and my charts. Um, and it, this is um, a model, right? So this is the point where you become born again. So you go from death to life, yeah? Now, some Christians, when they become born again, but they grow in their sanctification, holiness, their, their love of the Lord, and, and that growth continues until the day Jesus comes back. And that's a good line to be on, all right? And I hope we are all on that line. Other Christians, when they become born again, they do, then they plateau. And somehow they, they are the same today as they were 10 years ago. Other Christians, actually, who are skilled, can plateau at a higher level. But that is good, but it's better to grow in Christ, Yes. Some Christians, when they are born again, actually do that. Now, whether they go to heaven or not, I, I'm not going to quote on that. I, I knew a, a famous saying that people who da do this never had Christ in the first place because it's a big thing to turn your back on the Holy Spirit and on Christ. So what I'm hoping to do today is encourage you to sort of to grow in Christ because there's always more he wants to do with you. And plateauing is all right, but it's, it's more important to um, have this growth, to love Jesus more today than he did last week. Yes? To understand how, how lovely the, our Father is in heaven. It's just uh, amazing. So we're going to look at a, a simple parable, which is from uh, the book of Matthew about the, the parable of the sower, and this should come up. Then he told them many things in parables, saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed on the ground, some fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times that which was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. We then go on to 
1823, where the Lord unwraps and explains this parable, and he says these words. Listen to then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears a message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed which is sown among the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time when trouble or persecution comes because of the word. They quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke them, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Do you know, uh, in God's economy, he is amazing. How can you produce a little, plant a seed like that and get a hundredfold? You walk through a field and where the farmer's planted one grain of wheat and there's a whole load. God is so generous. God is so wonderful. Jehovah Jireh is our provider. I won't go through the parable again, but you know the story and how it was meant to... Um, impact on our lives. So, the Word of God, the Spirit of God, is a seed. And I have some seed packets here. I will say right from the beginning, I am not a gardener, right? I am useless. My technique, if I see something growing, if I pull it out, it's a flower. If it don't come out, it's probably a weed. Yes, yeah, so. Right. You see, when you sow peas, you expect peas to come, don't you? Yes? When you sow whatever these are, anyway, those flowers, <laughs> you expect flowers to come. You see, the seed is planted in the soil and it's not a condition of the seed that gives us growth. It's the condition of the soil in which the seed is planted, or not, if it falls on stony ground. So, the soil is you and me. We have to be good soil. We have to be good Christians. We have to be good people. That when the seed is sown in you and me, we grow to give glory to God. Likewise, we have instruction from Psalm 92. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like the cedars of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the court of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Okay. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. The Bible is full of the encouragement to help us grow. And I believe really with all my heart that there's no retirement in God's service. In fact, as you get older, you should have more time to work in the kingdom. Don't buy a debt chair, read your Bible instead, sort of thing. And really enjoy what God has for you as you get older. Again, there's another reference in Job, oh, Job, sorry. Job 17, verse 9. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways and those with clean hands will grow stronger. And here, the hand comes in. And I often understand people by how they handle stuff, how they handle their lives, how they handle other people how they handle money, what do they do with their hands, because we are to lift holy hands up to the Lord. And so many people today, when they leave a church, will go and do something wrong with their hands. Immorality speaks to mind, but so many people don't understand that our soul, our self, Christ in us, has an outworking through what we do with these. 
So keep your hands pure. Make sure that the, um, the gospel is really clear. I'm going to say something now which might offend some people. All right. But uh, when I did a, a, a man, I done a men's meeting in America and stuff, I, I had this sort of particular thing about spectacles, what you see, testicles about your moral life, heart, where your heart is, and, and your wallet is normally in your top pocket. So the Lord wants you to be pure in all these aspects of your life. And then you will grow in him because when you are sort of not wholly given to God, the soil is marred. We are rooted in God. John 15, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Right, the thing is, if we, if we put this seed in the ground and it's dead, but then it starts to fruit, and then fr from that we, we have apples or whatever it might be. So this is the fruit I know it's simple, that comes from this, which has now grown. And I'm, again, not a, a tree person, but the size of the tree has to be balanced with the size of the root, otherwise the tree would fall over, yeah? And for Christians, if there's little fruit, there is, sorry, if there's little root, there's little fruit. You see a person that is going on great, and despite their trials and tribulations, they hang on in there, you will know there's lots of root stuff going on. Lots of prayer and, and private study, a person who wants to help others, and that's why the fruit is there. So if you want more fruit in your life, spend more time in the soil of your soul, digging down deep, you know, like it said, if, if you remain in me, my words remain in you. And we can really have that walk with Christ. Oops. Something, something else that I just want to consider. Right, the seed that is planted here, right, hopefully... I mean, this is a very quick sketch. We'll grow like that, and then eventually you have whatever the crop is, don't you? And, and that is over time, obviously. And that also has to go through season. And this is you and me now. And we know sometimes it can get cold, lonely. Other times we have the sun. I should spell that S-O-N, and the sun. You know, a farmer plants a seed knowing that the seed has to go, grow through coldness, winter, autumn, spring. And that's the same for you and me. We are planted in Christ. That we, He knows what our life is like. He knows our ups and downs. He knows where we're going. And the, and the outcome of the seed depends on where we are. What is that? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll move that. It's where we are here in our root. You get that? If this is not done down here, this will not happen up here. And, and sometimes, in fact, most times, what God sows in our heart here only comes out could be ten years away. What has, God, you know, what has God put in your heart? And when it starts to grow, it's quite small, under the ground, and people don't notice it. But as you dedicate your life more to Christ, you will find that you will grow and produce fruit. And the whole purpose of a tree or a plant is to produce fruit. Why? That that fruit can then die and be planted in the ground so more people come to Christ. Yeah? The whole process of our life is to produce fruit for Jesus' name. It's not all about what you and I do, it's what Christ does in us. So 
So, so, so what sort of seed is grown in your life? You might not know, maybe, because the Lord is working in that dark, quiet place where you have a feeling what's going on, but you have no idea. When I was called to ministry, I had no idea. No idea. And then it's sort of, wow. And, and then I'm, my life was spent in all sorts of crazy things. But also, I'm not saying this is for any of you, If you have a seed of wickedness, a seed of unforgiveness, a seed which is not for God's glory, that too eventually could grow. So again, be aware that there's stuff inside your heart and your soul which you have to deal with. There are issues in your life that could impact. Remember, I'll digress from my notes here. Remember the parable of the tares and the wheat? Right, so, and, and what did Jesus say? Leave it until the end time when the reaper comes and I'll throw the tares into my, in my, uh, onto the fire and the wheat into my barn. Well, I forget the name of the, the tare. The tare had a special name um, and it would grow next to the wheat. But down here, it would tangle its root into the wheat. And the tear, I forget the name of the, what it was now, the tear looks very much like wheat in its early stages. So this is what sin can do. It's okay at the start, when it eventually grows, then the tear becomes a different plant to the wheat, and then the farmer can decide you know, which is wheat. So it said if you pull up the wheat, you'll the tear you pull me up with it because it's entangled. But sin is like that. It, it, it's below the ground sometimes. So be careful. Understand that, you know, this whole seed thing is a theme throughout the Bible. Um... We have the Word of God. And I get quite a few people asking me questions. I was talking to a fellow yesterday about the Old Testament and how in the Old Testament there are lots of things that I don't understand where the children of Israel were allowed to go into Canaan and, and annihilate populations and stuff. But even though I have, not doubts, I have questions in my heart I have to trust the Lord because we walk by faith, not by understanding. There are certain things that we'll never know about God and his, and his word. It's essential to hold on to the truth of the Bible today, more so than any other time. There is so much going on in the world, so much um, stuff that's not right, that's preached from the pulpit. So many organisations that aren't preaching the whole truth, aren't preaching repentance, salvation, forgiveness, sin. They're preaching this goody-goody gospel that we're all okay, as long as we're nice people, we're going to go to heaven. Well, that's not the case. We have to be rooted in the word of God, rooted in salvation, and producing fruit to the glory of his name. Uh, I've got another scripture here just to confirm that. Matthew 7, please. It's number 6. Matthew 7, 16 to 20. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you'll recognise them. And we all have good fruit, don't we? And I want to just sort of come to a, a close and show you this. Right, this is our seed packet. So this could be you or could be me, right? So this is your seed packet. So in here, the Lord has put seed, you see. And 
And one of them is, is the fruit of the Spirit. Here we go. Love, joy, peace, patience, I'm cheating, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. There's a hard one, Carol. I know. <laughs> but we should all have the fruit of the Spirit. So the seed that God has put in our hearts, the Word of God, should end up at least with the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And also, he gives us gifts. There's a, a sign in the men's toilet, which most of you haven't seen. It says, God doesn't call the equipped, but it equips the called. Good not it? God does not call the equipped but he, he equips the call. So very often the people that have this wonderful fruit in their lives, they have got gifts as well. And they serve the body of church. They serve in all sorts of different ways. And I know many of you here do that, which is great. But maybe for some of you, possibly younger ones, there may be a calling on your life as well. And there you are, the fruit of the Spirit's in your life. You're doing stuff. You're working in the kingdom. And God starts to call you to something different. You're thinking, ooh, that's not for me, maybe. But if he calls you, he will help you do it. So I think many of us are in the fruit and gifts criteria, but maybe there are people here that are being called to do a specific work for the Lord, and it might be out your comfort zone, and mostly they are. So, the seed that's in your life now, what you're doing today with your seed and your fruit, is actually, it's part of your destiny. Because it will grow and, I'll get this right, the person that you are becoming is becoming now. You got that? So what you are today will impact what you are in the future. So if you're loving and kind and open and all that sort of stuff today, that will probably grow. If there's something in there that's not right, that's got to get sorted because that will also grow. Words like jealousy and stuff, and there's lots of scriptures around this, but I want to make sure that all of us on the chart I, I drew earlier, is this the one? Uh, at least here or there, and we are growing in Christ. We want to do more for his glory. All we have to do is surrender. It's not our gifts. It's what the Lord sees in you. Why did the Lord call that guy on the Damascus Road who was killing Christians, murdering them? Because somehow he knew his heart. He was passionate for Judaism. Well, that was wrong. He should be passionate for the gospel. So all he did, he took that gifting, turned it around, and made it a passion for building the church 2,000 years ago. So sometimes your gifting is already starting to be used by God. And just pray that all of us will be, be people who love God, people who will always want to be in that place. John 15, 16, it's not on your list, uh, Jane, but you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Most of the fruit that we are doing as Christians, we haven't seen it yet. Because what you do in your workplace as a witness for Christ, you might not see the fruit. Maybe because in that way God gets the glory and not you. But hallelujah, 
The fruit that we are producing through Christ will last into, into eternity. It will never fade or, or go off. Our fruit is eternal. And my prayer is that your life and my life might become more fruitful. That we will see this place grow with Christians. And we have the joy of seeing people born again and watching them grow in Christ. Amen. We just pray, Lord, you'll bless us. You'll help us, Lord, to understand that what you are doing in our lives, in our very heart, our very soul, that stuff you do deep down there, Lord, is the root of your word that will bear fruit. I pray, Lord, we'll all bear fruit for your glory, for your name.